Right now, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, paint the beach and the, and, the, and the bottom of the water and start painting the rocks and stuff. And the very bottom of the little lake is going to be black. But, I, but I'm going to be using this real sand right here to, uh, for some of the beach area and things. So I went ahead and I mixed up a little bit of paint to try to match it up. And I just used uh, folk art. Uh, an almond white and a camel and a light gray color to uh, try to blend my colors and I think I got her pretty close and for this I just use a, a nice little soft brush to uh, put it on with and the trick with this is when, you, when you're doing it you, you have to try to blend the black in with it so, so we'll go ahead and do the lighter color first because black is a lot stronger color Go ahead and we, we uh, basically get our base coat on on the beach here. And the nice thing about this color here is when I'm using the real sand with it, it should all just kind of blend in really nicely. I, uh, I get a lot of, uh, around here, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, mortar sand and and if you get it and you dry it out and you shift it, it makes for some pretty realistic looking base. So you just go ahead and put this on here, cover up your sculpt mold. And you may have noticed, I went ahead and I did a little uh, more sculpt mold right along the back here. I got thinking about how this was going to come together and I was, uh, I was, under, I was under the illusion myself that maybe, just maybe, with it being flat at, at the back, it might not blend in too good. So I went ahead and put myself on a, a shoreline here to, to make the lake look a little better. At least I think it will, anyways. And any areas here along the backdrop that that I got some sculpt mold on or. or if I happen to get a little bit of this uh, beach colored paint on, it, uh, uh, I can just touch up again with green afterwards. But uh, I'm going along here, just going ahead and getting the, the beach color all done. Just like so, just get a nice coat of paint on there. So that's the general idea, and I won't bore you with uh, doing the whole thing. So let me go ahead and finish the beach, and uh, I'll do the black in the center, and then I'll try to show you my technique for blending the two. You can see there where I went ahead and painted the deep areas of the lake, and you can see where I have the, uh, the lighter beach areas. So now, uh, black is a pretty strong color, so I went ahead and, and got, got the bottom all done first. Then I just take the, uh, where I want the, the uh, colors to kind of blend, I just kind of go in and, and uh, just go over them and such, like so, and kind of just let them work together. And uh, if you find it's still just a little too wet, like maybe it is right now, you can always go ahead and wait for black to dry a little more. But, but uh, good enough in here, I should be able to get it pretty good. stage you just kind of have to fiddle with it till you get what you want. The uh, trick is getting kind of a nice feathered edge. 
and you can just do it nice and lightly right there. You kind of get that edge. You don't want to. You don't want straight edges on it. Just go ahead and work it in. just by the illusion of, of how you go in and out right there. And if you want to get a little lighter up near the top, just go ahead and just add a little lighter color. Just kind of just keep working it and you're happy with your color. Before I pour this too, I am actually going to use the real sand on some of this. So uh, that even helps even more to kind of blend it in. So anyways, that's kind of the technique I use to get your, your different shades and different highlights. And, and uh, I'll go ahead and finish that up and then we'll start on the rock face. Okay, you will see here where I've basically got the base coat on here and then I've kind of feathered it in here so it gives you the illusion of, of shallower and deeper water. Now I'm going to have to run along here and touch this up with green and then of course I'll be putting some sand here to represent some beach but I'll also be using some uh, ground foam as well to, so it just won't be so uniform. But uh, now it's time to go ahead and, and start uh, painting the uh, rock. The first thing I do when I'm painting the rock is I use black and I just use acrylic black paint and I uh, dip my brush in water. It helps to, to thin this down a little bit to get her into all the crevices and just dip her in my, in my uh, paint and then I just Try to get it into all the little holes. Just at this point, we're just trying to get all the crevices filled and cover up all the blue and pink. Just to get her in there. Thinner, pull a little bit better. Just like so, just get her in there. After this, I'm going ahead and using that half brown brush again. I've, I've found this to be the, the easiest one so far to get all the little little uh, holes. got that much done and I need some more paint so this would be a good time for me to go ahead and, and uh, 
paint the rest of this on my own without boring y'all. And uh, then, we'll, then when it dries, I'll come back and start doing the highlights. Now that I've uh, got all the shades of gray painted and they're on there, now it is time to start doing a, a little bit of detail. So what I'm going to do is just take some nice clean water. I'm going to wet this down just a little bit. I'm going to try not to overdo it. Just uh, the purpose here is to try to get the, uh, the paint uh, to uh, feather out really nice and blend in really good. I won't wet too much at a time. Now, I'm going to take some take some burn umber and I'm going to dab it kind of in the cracks a little bit. Like so. Just to give her a little variation here. So that not not all the little recessed areas are are just black. Let's go with that right there. Now we'll just we'll kind of feather that out a little bit. Like so. Just uh, just to kind of blend her in. Make a few highlights here and there. Just uh, give her a so she's not all the same. She kind of looks just a little different. And of course, the colors around my neck of the woods aren't the same as what you get out in the desert or, or whatever. They they do tend to be more gray here. And, more brown. There we go. Now, a couple areas here I want to blend in just a little more. So I'm just adding a little bit of water to my brush. There we go. And that just makes them quite not so full. So just blend in a little more. There we go. I'll move it up here too. Just give it a little relief. Yeah, let's go on and we'll do some more here on this puppy rock. Yeah, need to wet this a little bit more. We'll go around the corner and we'll wet this a little bit. And the only reason I'm wetting this is it just it just helps the paint feather out and blend in just a little easier. Now you can also put the paint on it and just wet your brush afterwards and do it that way as well. But this technique seems to work pretty good for me. A couple of spots here. A couple of dark areas.
feather that out a little bit. There we go. That's not too shabby. Now let's go get some of the little lighter highlights on here. Again, I think it's just a little too much, so I'm going to just dip my brush in water a little bit and blend it out a little more. There we go. Doing that kind of allows the base color to show up through it a little bit. It's uh, more of a staining technique. There we go, I've got a, a good little bit of that done, and that kind of shows you the technique. Um, while you're at it, while you've got this thing, while you've got this particular paint out, what you can do is just to give your track a little more detail, just dab your brush in the water, get your paint quite thin, just Add a few little details to your ties. Now this will still be ballasted, but this will give some of your ties just a just a little bit of highlight. It actually makes your your track part of your scenery. There again, you don't want to cover everything. And now I'm also going to do just a really light the other base color in the rock as well. Try not to get it too heavy on there because the tracks tend to be a little dark. Now you can also add some black on top of that too, just to kind of bring out a little more relief that way. Just add a little black on your palette. Grab yourself a nice soft brush, wet it down good. Make sure you, in this case, you get your, your black really thinned out. Black one of a really strong color. And you can just add a few little black details on her. And then once that dries, you got some really nice looking weathered ties here. original brown and gray is still here so it uh, kind of adds little just little accents to it there we go once that is all ballasted up that track will really stand out as well. 
So anyways, I'll go ahead and continue this. And uh, after we get this done, I think we'll be ready to start putting down some ground cover. Thank you. 